When you want to know what is a typical value in your data set, then probably you take the average. However, the average can be highly influenced by outliers. And that problem we don't have when we look at the median, which is the middle value below which 50% of your data points lie and 50% of your data points lie above it. However, also the median is not perfect because it doesn't tell you anything about how widespread the data points are. Do you have a lot of variance or a little? Well, for that we could have a look at the range, which is the difference between the maximum and the minimum, or the interquartile range, which is the range of the inner 50% of your data points. And all of this information is captured in a box plot. But the problem is there is no native box plot visual in Power BI. But with a few workarounds, it's still possible. Let's have a look. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas. If this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look at a box plot visual, which looks like this over here. Why would you need it? Because it captures a lot of summary statistics for you in an efficient way. We have the difference between the maximum and the minimum. And we have the middle point, the median. 50% of your data points lies below it, 50% lies above it. But maybe you want to know where does the inner 50% of your data points lie so that it's not highly influenced by the outliers. Well, that's the inner quarter range, which starts at the 25th percentile, 25% of your data points lie below it, 75 above it, and goes until the 75th percentile. Now, all of that is captured in a box plot. All right, now let's build a box plot visual. We go over here to the visualizations, look for a box plot visual. However, it's not there. So what now? Well, we can use one of the other native visuals and turn it into a box plot. And the one that we go for is over here. It's going to be the combination of a stack column chart and a line chart. Okay, so that's going to be our starting point. Let's put it in the middle of our page, just like this. Okay, so now we have a combo chart to start off with. Next, we need the summary statistics. So that's the average, the median, the max, the min, and the 25th and the 75th percentile, for which I already created the measures, which you see over here, average, max, median, min, 25th percentile, and the 75th percentile. For, so for all of them, we have a function. All right, easy. Now let's bring over already the median. So I'm going to add the median to the chart and let's not put it here on the Y axis, but let's drag it over here to the Y line axis. All right, now I want to have a breakdown. Now here I'm gonna go to my sales channels, take the channel name and I'm going to add it over here on the X axis. Okay, so that gives us a starting point. Now we need to clean it up a little bit because I don't want to have a line. I just want to show the median as dots. So let's go over here to the formatting options, more options so that it opens up here on the right hand side. Okay, and here we can go and turn on the markers. Now the line itself I want to hide. So I'm going to the line settings and the stroke width, I put to zero. Okay, now this gives us only the markers. Now over here, the y-axis, I'm going to fix at zero. So y-axis, minimum zero. And if nothing changes in the visual, then just go here to secondary axis, turn it on, and also this one, I would put to zero already. Okay, now, now we have over here the medians. Now I also want to show the max, and the min. So I'm gonna go back over here to the data build panel. And then here on the line axis, I want to add the maximum and the minimum. So over here, max, and then we also bring in the minimum. So for now, these three are enough. Let's first clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of the title on the X axis. Then here for the Y axis, we don't need a title. So I'm gonna go here to Y axis, turn the title off, all right. Grid lines I would keep for the moment. And then here for the legend, let's simplify it a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the legend, turn also here the title off. And then here for the data builds panel, let's rename them. Instead of having here sales quantity median, I would just say median. And then over here we have the max. And lastly, we have the min. Okay, now then the markers themselves, we can also change if we go over here to markers. And then instead of having the dots, I'm going to change everything to lines. 
Now the color can change right below it. I would like the markers to have all the same blue color. Okay, now if you want them to be a little bit bigger, for example, 20 is the biggest, then increase that number here for size. And then here, the colors don't correspond yet because that we need to change here on the lines. If you go to the lines, there you also have colors and there I just choose the same color blue. All right, now for the median, I probably would pick a different marker shape. So I'm gonna go back to markers and then here for series, take the median and then here the type. Let's change that to maybe over here, this diamond, just like this. Just gonna make it a little bit smaller. All right, good, perfect. Now the next thing that we need are lines that go from the maximum point to the minimum point, which we can achieve with arrow bars. All right, so let's go back to the formatting options all the way down. There we find arrow bars. Now we can look here for the series max. All right, this is the series to which we're going to add the arrow bars. And then over here we can turn the arrow bars on and say what the upper bound should be and what the lower bound. Now, the upper bound is going to be the maximum. So let's take the maximum. The minimum is going to be the lower bound. Now, nothing shows just yet until you turn the bars on. Now, here for the formatting, let's maybe go for a different color. So I'm going to make this also dark blue, all right? With one that looks fine. And here, maybe for the border size, I would put it to zero so that we don't have a border around the line. All right, so we have now the range represented by that line that goes from the maximum to the minimum. And the middle point, well, that is here the median. But a box plot also has more summary statistics, like the average and the interquartile range. All right, now for that, we have already some measures. So let's go over here, open up the data pane. And here you see, we have the average is over here. So let's add that one as well, all right? And we have the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. All right, now this looks a little bit messy, so let's put it in the right order. So first of all, we have the min, then you would have the 25th percentile, the point below which 25% of your data points lie. Then we would have the median or the average. Now let's rename this one to average. Then we have the 75th percentile and only then we would have the max. Okay, now let me rename percentile to percentile just like this and do the same over there at the top. Now that looks a little bit overwhelming because all of the marker shapes are the same. So maybe let's choose already a different marker for the average. And let's also make sure that it shows a box and not just, well, the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. All right, so first let's go to the formatting options again. And then over here we can go to markers, choose the average, all right? And then for the average, I'm going to choose a different marker. For example, a circle. And let's make it a little bit smaller. All right, and then also go for a different color so that it's clear, maybe dark blue. And then here for the median, I'm going to do the same. Let's make it a little bit smaller and make it also dark blue. All right, so we have now our typical values estimated by the average and the median for the different channels. However, these values don't tell us anything about the variation for which we look at the ranges. The normal range goes from the maximum to the minimum and the inner quarter range which basically disregards the outliers and goes from the 25th to the 75th percentile. All right. However, it still doesn't look great. We still need to turn it into a box plot because the box, the crucial part of a box plot, that's still missing. Now, to achieve that, this is the point where you don't need just a line chart, but you need a combo chart. And that's why I chose a combo chart at the beginning because the box itself, that's going to be, well, one of the columns. So let's see how we can set it up. First of all, we have to take a step back and over here, I want to have the 25th percentile over here on the column Y axis and that 75th percentile I'm going to get rid of. Now, then we also need to make sure that both of the axes are in line. Now, a quick fix for that is if we go to the formatting options, then Y axis, I'm going to put that maximum for the time being to 30. And then also here for the secondary axis, well, we need to have the same, so 30 as well. Okay, now you see over here the 25th percentile, that's where the box actually needs to start. So what's currently blue, that's going to be white. 
And now on top of that, we need to put the inner quartile wage. But I did not calculate that just yet, which is going to be the next step. I'm going to go over here and add a new measure. And let's call this one the sales quantity and then inner quartile wage, IQR. And I want to have the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. So this one over here. And that's it. Now that we have the inner quarter range, we can add it to our stacked column chart. So I'm going to drag it over here below the 25th percentile. All right. So the dark blue part I want to keep, the light blue part I want to hide. You cannot remove it uh, because it pushes up the interquartile range to the correct level. So I'm going to go over here to the formatting options. And then here we can go to columns. The blue part, I want to make white or whatever color you chose for the background. And then what's left? Well, is the dark blue part, the inner quartile range, which we can make blue. Or uh, you can go over here and play around with the colors. I would make it maybe a little bit lighter. Just like this. Okay, perfect. Okay, and that already looks way better. Now, we're not done just yet. Let's now fix over here the top part. Now, the title, well, is a little bit much. So let's simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be sales quantity and then box plot or summary statistics, however you want to call it. All right. Now, then the legend is also a little bit messy. So I'm going to go here to the legend options. And over here, why is it so much? Because, well, percentile 25th actually shouldn't be there at all. I want to get rid of that one. Then instead of sales quantity IQR, I just want to say IQR, that inner part. And then for the min, median, and max, everything is fine. We can refine it a little bit. And the average is still pink, even though it doesn't show in pink. Okay, now let's fix each one of these issues step by step. Now let's start off by fixing the 25th percentile here in the legend. I want to get rid of it. So I can just rename it with a space, or multiple spaces, doesn't get overwritten. If that happens, just go to anticharacter.com, copy the character, go back, and then use that instead. And you will see that does work, doesn't get removed. All right, then here for sales quantity IQR, I just want to call it IQR. All right, perfect. And then over here, we need to refine the formatting of the legend a little bit further, which we can do if we go here to legend. Let's put it here now in the top right corner over there. And then here first, let's go to the line colors. All right. Then over here, we want to fix it for the average, which is still pink. OK, now I cannot change it. For that, I need to switch to all and only then I can change it. All right, so let's make the average maybe lighter blue. So maybe this color over here. And then of course we need to do that for the markers here as well. And so make sure that the right series is selected, average, and here also make it a little bit lighter blue. Perfect. And the max and the min, I probably would make a little bit smaller. And so let's put those to 10. And then here for the max, I'm also going to put the size to 10. Okay, now that already looks a little bit better. And then the box itself, I want to make it a little bit smaller. Now that we can achieve when we go to columns. And then here for spacing, the inner padding, we can just slide to the right. And you see that makes the box itself a little bit smaller. Okay, now that looks good. Now the next thing that still bothers me is that we hard coded the maximum here for that secondary axis. Now, if I go here to Y axis range, you see, I put in 30, which I want to be dynamic, right? So if you want that, then we need to have another measure that determines the maximum point for the y-axis. Okay, so new measure, and let's call this one y-axis max, which is going to be equal to, now we have already the maximum, so that's this one, sales quantity max. And it would just multiply it by a certain number that creates enough space above it. So 1.1 is probably okay. Then go back to options. And then here, instead of hard coding that maximum, you can just take the field value from the Y axis max. And the same thing you can do, of course, for the secondary axis. Also there, go to the FX button, field value, and then Y axis 
max. So that fixes that problem that it would not be dynamic otherwise. And once you have done that, then you can turn off the secondary y-axis. All right, now let's fine tune the formatting a little bit, like adding extra padding, rounded corners, and all of these kind of things. And there you go, we have our first version of a box plot. And right next to it, I also put in a date slicer for the year so that you can see it in action when we switch to a different year, like 2020. There we have the inner 50% of our data points kind of always laying between 10 and 20. And if I switch here to 2019, this looks quite different. And especially if we compare the catalog sales to, let's say, reseller sales. There, there's a lot less variation for the inner 50%. However, the range is more or less the same. So these are extra insights that could be very valuable depending on what you need for, uh, for your business decision making. Now, we're not completely there yet. I also still want to show you a variation of this. Now, what is also quite common to do is that you would not show the median there with a marker, but instead of that, you would split the box. Now, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go here to the measures. I'm going to add two more measures. So let's add another one. And this is going to be sales quantity IQR and going from the 25th to the 50th percentile. And here we can then take that median and subtract the 25th percentile. All right, now let's copy that. Let's do it once more for that second part of the IQR. All right, so I'm going to go and add another one, paste it in there. And here we want to go from the 50th percentile to the 75th percentile. And I want to go from the 75th percentile and then subtract the median. Okay, perfect. Now that we have these two measures, we can use them on the stacked column chart. So instead of IQR, I'm going to first take the beginning part of the IQR, then the second part of the IQR, just like this, so that you have the box split into two, which is maybe a little bit easier to read than instead of having a marker there for the median. So now let's open up the formatting options, go here to columns, let's make it look a little bit better, Choose the color blue that you like, all right? And then over here for the upper part, I want to make it maybe a little bit darker, just like this. Okay, perfect. Now, just play around with the formatting there. Then here, we can also rename those. So over here, we have IQR, and then again here, IQR. And ta-da, here we have our updated box plot variation number two. I just made a few formatting adjustments like the legend, I call it quarter of two, quarter of three. Also updated the colors just a bit, and there you go. Now, maybe you're also interested in how would that box plot look like if we would have a different breakdown? Maybe over time. Well, here you go. Here you see a little box plot that shows how the averages evolved over time. But not only the average, we also have information about the median, the interquartile range, and the entire range. So we also have a better idea of how the variance, how widespread the data points are, changed over time. And maybe if there was a very volatile period, the range increases. And in stable periods, the range might decrease. So valuable information that you can get from a box plot that you would not be able to get if you would just look at medians or averages. All right, so that's how you can build a box plot using native visuals in Power BI. Now, let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. If you want to see more visualization and design tricks, then check out these videos over here. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one.